So, the second wave of Splatoon DLC just came out. Side order. If you didn't know, in Splatoon 1, the final Splatfest was determining the question of which in-game idol was better, Callie or Marie. The answer that the players decided was Marie, and she became the companion for the player in Splatoon 2's story campaign, while Callie was kidnapped and corrupted by the villain, making her part of the final boss fight. Side Order was probably intended to follow a similar theme. Splatoon 2's final Splatfest was called Chaos vs. Order, and every relevant character and faction in Splatoon chose a side to be on. Marina was the leader of Team Order, which notably contained the Octarians, Agent 3, and Marie, and Pearl was the leader of Team Chaos, which covered the Salmonids, Agent 4, Callie, and Spike, my favorite boy. Unsurprising for a game like Splatoon, Chaos won, which influenced the creative direction of the next game. Notably, how much new stuff was added to the Salmonid Horde mode, and the Octarian faction no longer being the main threat. DJ Octavio himself, the leader of the Octarians, was part of Team Chaos, so Octavio stuck around while the importance of his faction was reduced. Side Order plays off the Chaos vs. Order theme of the last Splatfest, with the implication that this would have been Inkopolis if Order had won. But after you play the story, you immediately realize that this implication isn't true. The entire DLC takes place in a virtual world that was built by Marina. This is not real in-universe, and never will be. People's minds got sucked in through an unintended exploit, but nothing about this DLC has anything to do with Order winning the Splatfest, or affecting the real world, or even the hero mode story. I'm just gonna go ahead and say it now. This DLC was lacking, especially in its story department. I have never seen a video game hate its own story so much. I've played games like Super Mario where I would have described it as hating its own story before due to how flimsy the justification for the gameplay is, but I think that this phrase has become completely redefined for me now that I've played Side Order. Everything that was implied in the trailer was resolved story-wise basically by the end of the tutorial. The first 30 minutes of this DLC contains 80% of the story content. This is a roguelite, by the way, so to beat it, you have to play it over and over again. But most of the story content's in the tutorial, which you only play once. The way roguelikes and roguelites are supposed to work is that you gradually get more and more story as you beat the game over and over. You learn more about the characters, or you unlock more pieces of the plot. The best roguelike to do this, I think, is probably Hades, and coincidentally, that game costs about as much as this DLC. Hades was much better because you don't get to 90% of its story content until you've literally completed 100 runs, maybe even more depending on how bad or good you are at the game. The gameplay is fun, but learning more about the characters and discovering the secret behind your mother's banishment is why you do what you do. I would not have pushed through to defeat those fucking poison rat bastards if I didn't want to see my mother smile waiting at the end for me. Side Order, meanwhile, introduces us to every single character in the tutorial. They then give us every single character's motivation over the course of about two runs. Two runs! That's all it takes to get through almost the entire DLC's story content, which is the tutorial, the elevator dialogues, and the logs. How long does it take to do two runs? About an hour. So, in total, if you go slow, there's about two hours of story content in a roguelite, which is designed to be played over and over again. There's a tiny bit of content left that isn't unlocked in those initial runs, which is where you get Marina's dev diary talking about the spire and small us comments on every weapon that you beat the DLC with, but factoring in 30 minutes for each run to get two paragraphs of content, that isn't a great playtime to value ratio. And again, you can probably get all of those within about 10 runs, maybe 20 if you fail a few times. Is the story we got even good? Uh, no. No, it's not. Don't, don't think it was. There are four main characters, Deadfish or Oct, Pearl, Marina, and Eight. The place that we're in is a simulation created by Marina in an attempt to help sanitized Octolings regain their memories. If you didn't know, Splatoon lore is that the Octolings lived underground, where they were essentially brainwashed by DJ Octavio. 
In the first game, Callie and Marie sing a song known as the Calamari Incantation, which breaks the Octoling's brainwashing and makes him seek the surface in an attempt to have a new life. However, some of those Octolings were caught by Commander Tartar, an AI that was created by the long-dead humans, who sanitized these Octolings by taking away their memories and personalities, giving them strenuous tests to check their abilities. Those that survived would be killed and turned into genetic material for a new species, a true successor to humanity. Eight, our main character, was one of the sanitized Octolings, and Marina was going to use her as a test subject for her project, which is why we're in the DLC. This simulation is going haywire and sucking in random people. The enemies inside have also become stronger and more evil, which is why these sniper fuckers exist, because only a truly hellish mind could have made these things. Eight is a blank slate who's gradually trying to put together pieces of who she is and typical of silent main characters, doesn't really have any motivations besides what the player wants her to do. Dead Fish is the musician responsible for most of the tracks in the Octo expansion, and her lore was that she was a depressed musician seeking new inspiration, which led her to getting sanitized by Commander Tartar. Her story was only told through logs, so this is the first time we've actually get to see her in reality. We don't really know how or why she's here, the people sucked into the simulation are usually turned into pallets, which are the different weapon loadouts you can get. However, Act is mysteriously completely intact and now runs the elevator. She is the character I was most interested in seeing, but has absolutely zero purpose in this narrative. One of the things that makes characters compelling and interesting are their motivations, but Oct doesn't have any. In the tutorial, we meet up with her because she wants to know why Marina was calling for help from the top of the tower. But Marina's conflict is resolved by the time that the tutorial is done. After that point, Oct literally does nothing but stand in the elevator. She has one vaguely interesting elevator dialogue with Pearl, where she says that she doesn't want to be a soldier, and that she had been searching for the person whose cry had awoken her from Commander Tartar's control. Two sentences later, she confirms that the person yelling had been Pearl, and that's it. We're out of motivation for Oct. She literally does nothing but press the buttons on the elevator at this point. Her entire role could easily have already been filled by Pearl and Marina. She adds nothing to the DLC but her good music. I definitely don't want to downplay how good the music is. Like, literally, they managed to make music that sounds even better than the Octo Expansion soundtrack, which I didn't think was possible. But they did it, consistently, several times. Like, in that sense, I'm glad Oct was here so they gave us the dead fish music, but other than wanting Oct around for the music, she served no purpose. It's weird because, once again, she shines in the logs. If you complete all the weapons, you get some special diaries that are from Oct to Marina instead of Marina's diary. These logs reveal a character full of longing, wanting to be like Marina, wanting to find a place in the world, wanting to make music because they feel like there's nothing else they can do. But that's her past, and the Oct we meet is boring and directionless, and not in a way that builds character. She's just there. The best thing about this DLC is that it basically confirms that Pearl and Marina are in a relationship, or at least close enough to probably be in one. I mean, you know, that's nice, good for her, they deserve each other, etc, etc. But all of their chance for character development was slaughtered on the altar of Marina sucking Pearl's dick like it's a lollipop covered in cocaine. Now if I had a girlfriend like Pearl, I also probably would never shut up about her. But I'm not a character in a narrative. I'm a human being. A character needs to want things and do things. We are shown Marina being evil during the tutorial because of a software malfunctioning thing. And we're told that it's probably her desire for the world to never change stroke her fear of change that caused order, her computer program that ran the spire to become evil. However, by the end of the DLC, we find out that it wasn't Marina's fault at all. Instead, some other random unnamed engineers who helped make the project fucked it all up. Okay... I'm completely baffled as to why they made some random unnamed engineers the cause of the spire's faults instead of Marina. Having Marina work through her fear of change is infinitely more interesting than being told that some other guys over there are scared of change, I guess, and Marina is perfect and can do no wrong. I also think that Marina should have been the final boss instead of Order, or that the final boss should have been an echo of her. It's insane that we got this kind of design and interesting hook but completely lost it, again, by the end of the tutorial! Pearl is 
fine here, I guess. He spends most of this DLC either using splat bombs or getting sucked off by Marina. Nothing bad to say about her, but nothing good either. The gameplay itself is pretty easy for the vast majority of the game. It only gets easier with every run as you unlock more and more hacks, to the point where you're almost invincible by the time you get through all the weapons. I wish that they would have added an endless mode to really test players' limits, where floors just kept getting harder and harder as you go. I also hope that this floor, this one right here, yeah, I hope it catches pneumonia and dies. I fucking love the horses. They're my favorite ocean creature. And these things made me start to reconsider my love for seahorses. Fuck you, fuck you. Every level with these sprinkler guys in it makes me want to hurl too. Oh my God, no one asked, go away. The eight ball levels were my favorite ones in the Octo expansion, but I'm not a big fan of them here. The eight balls were fun because they were precise, unique 3D platform challenges. These balls are more like, check if you have Luna Blaster, if no, just smack the ball a few times and kill some guys. If yes, start praying to any god that will answer. The balls are such a pain when you're using Luna, they're annoying to manipulate and can kind of randomly go in any direction. There are very few builds though where I felt like I couldn't complete the game and I finished a fight against Order within my first five runs. Now I have way too much playtime in Splatoon and I'm sure that someone with less experience would probably get more of a challenge here. However, for the most part, it's just managing hordes and ink consumption. Always pick up Reef Slider or Booyah Bomb instead of whatever the default special is, because I feel like those two are the best outside of niche circumstances. I had a lot of fun with Stamp 2, but it's more situational. If you like Splatoon, you should get this if you want the white multiplayer cosmetics. But if you're only a casual player, this DLC is not really worth it. I'd save my money for the next Nintendo console, or pick up a great roguelike like Hades or Bellatro. If you're a hardcore Splatoon fan, this DLC is an insulting slideback from the great characters we got out of the Octo expansion, but it's more game mode for that unique, liquid to solid, delicious Splatoon gameplay. I swear to god, as soon as someone makes an entire single player game experience with a deep story that copies Splatoon's liquid to solid movement mechanics, I'm gonna be putting a thousand hours into that instead of wasting my life queuing into multiplayer. Anyway, next week we'll be back on schedule with a Sunday video, sorry about the tech issues delaying two videos, and I'll see you later!